Hey everybody, welcome to Sports Casual Games YouTube channel. My name is Jay, aka Mr. Ghost Protocol, and I would like to welcome you to uh, my in depth review of God of War, the comic. Um, basically, a few months ago, I did a mini review on the Sports Casual Games podcast on one of our episodes, and um, every week we do a podcast and we have a segment called the weekly comic bookie bookie of the week where we bring you the weekly gaming comics every week just to let you know that there are gaming comics or comics that's based on games shall i say so whether you're into like um, halo or whatever there's comics for halo that you can collect that go in depth with the lore and stuff like that so we so we um, like to do that every week and as I was saying, um, I did like a mini review. It was like a non-spoiler one and stuff. And um, but it was very light. I wasn't really going too in depth into what I thought about the comic and so forth and so on. So I thought I would do that this evening. Um, so basically, this is um, God of War comic. It is a four mini series, four issues, shall I say? Very was it very short? Four issue mini series and. They're published by Dark Horse, and for those that are not aware, that Dark Horse are the same publishers that published the God of War Collector's Edition art book. So if you manage to get the Collector's Edition, you've got like a little art book, and Dark Horse was the publisher that published that. Same with The Last of Us, same with Uncharted, same with Tomb Raider. Um, Dark Horse tends to like publish um, a lot of the artwork, the books, the Collector's Edition books that come with the Collector's Edition um, and stuff like that. So it kind of makes sense that Dark Horse would be publishing a lot of these comics um, that are based on games and stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, um, when I found out that they was releasing this and it was going to be a short mini series for issues, I was like, yeah, bam, I'm on it. Um, I missed The Last of Us one. I managed to get The Last of Us thanks to my partner in crime, Karen, managed to find them for me on YouTube for red, well, quite cheap. Um, but yeah, when I first heard that these were coming out, I had to get them. Now, it was quite difficult to actually get them because as they were coming out, they were like about four or five pounds each. And normally when you get comics, they're normally like about three pounds, 60, 70, you know, something like that. Um, and, but with these ones, these were like four pounds, five pounds. And it seemed like there was only like, like, like a, um, like, like there wasn't a lot of them should I say so it was like a big thing to get them and I just had to I just had to get them you know and it was quite difficult and I had, and all of these I actually got online like whenever I went to the comic book store they just didn't have them or if they did they just went straight away because it was like a big deal because God of War the game did so well last year you know it's probably like a lot of people's favourite games it's one of my favourite games as well so um, when so obviously when they're releasing comic and releasing extra story you know, that connects to the actual game you know it makes sense it's going to be a big thing so everybody kind of wanted to get their hands on it including me and um, yeah it was quite difficult and um, yeah a little bit expensive in in regards to actually getting comics shall I say um, what I will say is that uh, for those who got the Kletz edition that there was a um, issue zero of God of War like a digital version that you could watch on your PS4 so that kind of like, you know, uh, sparked the flames of me wanting to get this miniseries because when I saw that and I read it, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. It wasn't long, I was re it was actually really short. Um, I can't remember how many pages it was, but it was actually really short, like way shorter than these. And um, basically, um, as, I said, was, as I was saying, when these got released, I needed to get them. So, you know, um, Basically, you know, the script was written by Chris Robertson and art was done by Tony Parker and uh, colouring was Dan Jackson and the lettering was done by John Ross, Ross Hill, I think that's how you say his name. Um, and the cover art was E.M. Geist. So, um, the one thing I will say about this, um, it's kind of similar to The Last of Us, is that the artwork for me isn't like the cover is amazing like the cover for all of these are really really amazing it, like what was it this is this was it this is like some i don't know like like almost like some like paint brushing kind of like you know like 
artwork it's just really really nice you know you could almost frame it if, if, if there was that was if there was none of this logos and everything there you could just literally frame it because it looks like like a really good like art piece you know like someone painted it or something so so all the covers for these are really really good um so and i mean i like i mean i love this style and stuff but in but in regard to the artwork inside the book um the books shall i say that the artwork for me is not particularly that great compared to what i'm accustomed to looking at and uh you know reading shall i say and even the coloring is it's, 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 it's good it's okay but like i said before it's, it's not um up there with a lot of the other types of comics that i like to read and you know really into and stuff um you know um but nevertheless i had to get these and the same thing as the last of us it's literally just you know it, like it's, it's it's a particularly art style like a unique i mean like a unique art style but that's not the reason why i get these comics i get these comics because i want to read more about the story more about the lore more about these characters more about the world helps um like you know it helps to flesh out you know um that like the the the, the, the world of the game shall i say you know it's just like um you know like you know what i mean like the last of us for instance american dreams it was kind of like a prequel you know about um ellie and riley and going into their friendship and stuff like that and to be honest with you it's kind of the same thing with these ones it's literally like this is now these four issues they're all set before the game just before the game you know um the mother's gone away um she's gone to go collect wood or something you know she gone somewhere like i'm not gonna like, i'm not gonna ruin it because i want you to actually go and get these comments and read it yourself but basically she goes away you don't ever see her just like you don't see her in the game um which is kind of well i mean i thought it was a bit of a um letdown because it would have been nice to actually have like seen her you know like with kratos and just to see her interact with kratos and and um and atreus you know the sun and stuff you don't really see that in the game like i think you get like there's like it's a part in the game where you get um like flashbacks or something and you kind of see her but you don't really see her interacting with kratos and the sun and so forth and so on playing happy families you know so it kind of pretty much it's weird but it kind of like you know it kind of like has that same feel or kind of like picks up from where the game is almost like the game starts and she's gone off to go and collect wood and something happened and obviously you know she passes away uh so but with this one she's actually gone so you don't see her you just hear about her so um you know and this is more um like it gives you more of an understanding of why kratos is the way he is with his son in the game you know um and it's like with kratos like the whole i mean the whole like the whole theme of these comics is, is him like actually seeing him dealing with his rage dealing with that anger like trying to control it and every day he goes out to test himself and test himself you know to um you know to i mean to see if he's um you know uh got to a point where he can actually control his rage or where his rage doesn't control him he controls it so he's not a slave of his rage if you get what i mean like you know rage becomes a slave of his almost kind of thing and it's like that whole dynamic of him not wanting to show that side to his son but also trying to show his son a normal life and a better way you know and it's actually, and it's actually funny as well because you actually see how like in these comics you see um you see why or where or, or, or like, shall i say in the game like um like the comic kind of like 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 goes more in depth to why he's so overprotective in regards to his son you know why he doesn't want his son to have the life he had why i mean why he doesn't want his son to realize that he is a god um you know and and why he just on space why he just wants him to just live a normal life and stuff because he doesn't want him to go through the same trials and tribulations that he had to go to that like, was it go through you know kratos you know doesn't like just does, he does not want that for his son um but you know through them um so basically yeah so the mother's gone missing and stuff not missing but she's gone off and what and whatnot and um 
you know, and the sons basically, um, you know, Kratos gets caught up in a situation where these beast men are basically, um, you know, like he uh, ends up attacking the beast men and stuff like that, but he doesn't know it's a beast man, he just thinks it's some wild animal, and then you find out it's a beast man, then the other, you know, the, 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 the pack or the other clansmen or whatever, they want revenge, so they come back to the house. So it's a situation where he has to protect his son from these beast men. But the whole time he's like, no, I just don't want, you know what I mean? Like, I, was, I don't want this uh, this conflict, this issue. Like, please just go away. Like, I didn't know, I'm, I'm you know, like I'm giving you a chance. Like, please walk, I mean, please walk away. But obviously these beast men ain't having it. So he, you know I mean? he ends up fighting the beast men and rocking the beast men and, and Atreus kind of gets involved and stuff. And, and, and that's when you first start to see, you know, like, um, you know, like why Kratos is really overprotective because like Atreus kind of gets himself, puts himself in arm's way and kind of sees, he's, you know what I mean, like sees Kratos like fighting and, 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 and the rage kind of taking over a little bit and Kratos is kind of like in this whole thing of like trying to control his rage but at the same time he doesn't want his son to see it and stuff but trying to protect his son and it's this whole... No, I mean like this whole, no, I mean like this whole um, swirl of emotions and that, that Kratos had to deal with, you know, in the process of actually just trying to just do like a natural thing, which is, you know, as, you know, the man of the house, you want to protect your family, you, like, you want to protect your son and stuff, and you want to try and raise your son, um, you know, to the best of your abilities and to give your son the things that you didn't have and, and to pass your knowledge down to your son. But this doesn't really happen because it's like, it kind of, um, kind of like you know really protective and kind of like light like, like kind of lying a little bit or like being a bit dishonest like like kind of keeping a lot of things from his son should I say you know um, like half truths and stuff um, but you know but um, and yeah and they basically go on like a little journey to be honest with you and as I was saying like through this little journey you kind of like see them um, bonding and stuff you know and but what ends up happening, they get to a certain point, this witch and stuff, and and the witch knows of him because the mother goes to the witch's house and stuff, well, the witch's house, shall I say, and, you know, obviously talks about, um, you know, her husband, which is Kratos. So, and the witch knows, like, um, you know, Kratos' is native tongue, so they can actually just speak and stuff. And it's actually really funny, because I mentioned it in my, um, was it in my mini review as well, was that, when people are speaking North, um, Kratos doesn't understand it, so his son translates it. But in the comic, like what they really, I mean, what they've done, which is really cool, I can show you, is that when they're um, speaking North, he doesn't understand it. But what ends up, oh, I don't know if you can see it because it's so small. Um, let me try to see a bigger one. So, what happens is that when they speak in another language, uh, Atreus can understand it obviously because in the game, if you haven't played the game, he actually translates a lot of what um, Kratos doesn't understand, which is quite cool. And but what they've done in the comic is that they've done it in this like I don't, I don't know if you're gonna see it, but I don't know if you can see here. But they've done it in like the kind of um, Viking North kind of like lettering and stuff to the point where I can't even read it. It's really hard to read. And I suppose it, it's, it's done in a way that you could technically read it, but I just can't read it. I just can't get my head around it. They just like, like I can't make out what some of the um, letters are. So it's kind of annoying. But at the same time, it, it, it kind of um, adds on. It's like they managed to um, incorporate that same element in the game where um, Kratos couldn't understand and someone would just have to translate and it's kind of, and, and it's the same thing here but they just but I like the way they've managed to incorporate it into the comics so it's quite clever the way they've done that and stuff even though at first I, like, I thought it might have been like some type or, or, or like some you know or like some glitch with the printing or something you know so at first I did find it a little bit annoying like I can't read this what's the point of it being there but obviously if you've played the game you kind of get I mean get what they're trying to do it's quite clever so I quite like that but um, yeah, so as I was saying, they um, so um, so like they're trying to um, was it so they go to the witch's house and stuff, and the witch knows about Kratos and they speak in Kratos' Kratos's native tongue and stuff, and 
you know, and which tells him, oh yeah, like your wife comes here and stuff and for herbs and she talks about you and so forth and so on and whatnot. Then she tells Kratos basically about, oh, um, you know, if you want to stop the beastmen from coming and stuff, um, like you have to go to where they're at and stuff and basically tells them about this story and this myth about the beast men and stuff and she's basically telling him that if you want to like you know beat them and stop it you have to do like certain things and stuff and so basically Kratos was like all right then cool but she tells Kratos there's going to be a price for it because you know like with witches or wizards or a lot of these laws or these things there's always a price you pay if you want to do something or you want power to obtain power or whatever or to break a curse there's always like a um you know like there's always a price so she tells him about a price and you know so he's like i'm gonna call i'm gonna do it and stuff and you know the price is i mean i won't really go into what the price is you know but there's a price and he goes off and um and as he's leaving the trails is like oh like i'm coming he's like no that like, boy you're staying here and it's funny because he actually says boy a lot in the comments so you know if you play the game you kind of hear that voice boy like in your head as you're reading the comment which, which is actually really cool and um, he's, he's basically, no, you're staying here, you know, because what happened earlier when he was fighting the beast men and stuff, one or two escaped and obviously they've gone back to the camp or whatnot. So, so to prevent them from coming back, he has to take the fight to them, which is why they went on this little journey in the first place. So he's like, no, you have to stay here. Like, stay, was it? Stay with the sorcerer. Like, stay with the witch. She, like, she will protect you and I will go. And he basically goes off and stuff. And on the way to the journey, he's questioning the fact that you know, um, you know, questioning the fact about like, is he letting himself go again? Is the rage controlling him? You know, is he, you know what I mean? Like, is he ever get to a point where he can control his rage? He thought he had control of the rage at one point, but because these beast men come, he let himself go a bit. And therefore he's like all these confusion. And the way the comic articulates and, you know, shows you the confusion and stuff is like quite cool. And um, yeah, then you basically get, go to the camp, see the beast men and stuff, um, you know, uh, creeps into their camp and so forth. Um, basically wants to like go to the leader, you know, and basically just take him out and stuff. And, and he's kind of like politic in, in his head. And in that process, they all wake up and bam, he just starts fighting and stuff. And the way they show like the, you know what I mean? like like the, um, the fights and stuff like is that was it because this is the thing about this comic like the artwork is like um i mean like the the general artwork here is is it's okay it's quite good you know um but when it gets to the fights and stuff like this like like this panel here like it gets really detailed and really good and this was and this is the thing that i actually wish that like that it was this quality, this standard on everything, on every page and it just wasn't that, you know, it just wasn't that. But um, I didn't mind it to be honest with you, you know what I mean, like, I thought it was quite, because sometimes like what I've noticed that with some comics, even with anime as well, is that when it gets to the fight sometimes, um, they kind of like cut corners because they might have a budget or whatever, so there's, so sometimes the fight's not, you know, it might not be animated that well, it might not look that good. but. Sometimes they tend to, well, especially if it's like a long running anime series or something like that. But sometimes what tends to happen is that the normal um, episodes and the art animation won't be particularly that great. But when you get to the fights, it's like you kind of you kind of see where the budgets all kind of gone to, and they've kind of done the same thing with this comic, you know. So yeah, it was quite, um, you know, it was quite funny to see that, but. Um, but when it gets to the fights, the artwork and the artwork in this is like, yeah, really good. And you know, the gore and blood, it just doesn't it was it just was it like they don't play around. Like they don't play around. And you see, um oh and another thing that I like about this comic as well, because I thought that it was just gonna be like the same enemies that you saw in the game and stuff. And these beast men, they're not in the game. So I like the fact that they were able to incorporate another um, you know, like another enemy to fight or to go against it was it wasn't just churning out the same enemies and even the same um was it and like even like same characters that you've come across in the game the fact you come across this witch and like she's not in the game you know so it was so i quite like the fact that you got introduced to new characters and new enemies and stuff 
Um, you know, yeah, you've got like the, um, you know, like the giants and stuff like that. Oh, sorry, not the giants, the, was it the trolls, should I say, the trolls, you know, like there are some enemies and stuff and the wolves and stuff like that. But, you know, it was quite cool that um, they introduced us to new um, enemies and new characters and stuff. So that was quite cool. Um, yeah. So he ends up fighting, basically tearing up um, the beast men and stuff. And basically, in that process, he loses. He kind of, was it kind of loses himself and stuff. And when he goes back to the witch's house, um, he he kind of realizes that was the price that he would. I mean, that he had to pay. You know, something like that. Anyway, because so I was I was I read these. Um, that went like a while ago when it came out so you no know, I can't really uh, remember in depth exactly everything that happened but to be honest with you I don't really want to tell you everything that happened because I kind of want you to get it and read it yourself and it's short anyway it's only four um, was it four issues and stuff and but I but I read a lot and watch a lot so you know not a lot stays in my head sometimes you know uh, so that, that's why to be honest with you I probably should have done this review like in-depth review like right after I finished reading it so it was all fresh in my head but um yeah fuck it you know i'm doing it now anyway so yeah um then yeah then basically he comes back um then basically like he has a conversation with the witch and the traders and stuff then he's like look we're going home your mother will be home then they just basically go home and you know it just like fleshes out i, I was it i, I was it. I, as i keep on saying that like, these comics fleshes out and gives more um more depth, more layers to Kratos and, and, and Atreus and their connection. Because at the end of the day, which is one of the things I loved about the game and I love about these comics, is that it's, it's, it's a relationship between a father and a son, you know, and what it is to be a father and what it is to be a father to have a son and to raise him, you know, and to raise him without his, I mean, without his mother in their lives anymore because you know she's um i mean because she's passed away and stuff so it's just that i mean it's just that relationship it, i mean it, it was it just spoke to me you know like if you're a father and i mean like, I was, i'm not a father but if you have kids you know i mean if you're a father and you have a son or a daughter and stuff like that you know like i can't imagine i mean i can't imagine that you know you know what i mean like you know what i'm trying to get at you know and i and and, and i and i can't imagine that if you played god of war the game how how like that game had spoke to you a lot you know and these comics do the same thing like these comics do the same thing it's, it's, it was it's a really good read what i tend to do when i read comics is that i tend to listen to soundtrack music so i've got the god of war soundtrack and what i did is like one of my favorite tune um tunes that i like to ch play that track that i like to play is the valkyrie the valkyrie um uh, so was it tune the one where you're fighting the Valkyries and stuff I just love that tune and I had that playing in the background while I was reading it to get me like like to, like to get my mind really like into the world of um, God of War and while reading these comics and stuff to make it more immersive more interactive shall I say and stuff and as I was saying before with the certain elements and the way they did certain things like with the language and stuff you know it, it, it made it more immersive for me personally um so yeah, that's that is basically my um, you know, my was it my in-depth review of these comics. What I will say is that if you can, if you was it, if you've played the game, I would say get these comics. They are worth getting. The only thing is, is that I don't know how much they're gonna be right now because when I got them, they were like five pound each, and. I haven't checked recently, but I can only imagine that they've gone up in price and stuff. If like if like if these are anything like the Last of Us comics, then these might be a little bit expensive. I can't was it, I was I I can't tell you exactly how much they're going to be. But what I would say, check eBay because that's where you're going to find them. You you won't find these in your local comic book stores, and if you do, you're a very lucky individual. But um, if you can go to your local comic book store and look for them, if you can't find them, go to eBay and. If they're at a reasonable price, then I recommend that you order them. This is for me a if was it if you love the game and you're a collector, 
of comics and stuff and you love God of War and you got the Clets edition and you have the figurine or whatever I would strongly recommend to get these because this this is something definitely worth having definitely worth owning um, for the lore and for um, you know for the um, characters and stuff to, to give you more of in-depth leading up to the game it's definitely definitely worth getting um, so yeah as I was saying um, you know the front covers of these comics are are really good in my personal opinion I love these covers um, like there wasn't any uh, cover A cover B it was just one it was it was just one cover which is really good so you ain't got to run around and try and get different covers like, I quite like that so it's just like uh, you know one covers for each four and um, the artwork on cover I like it really good um, as I said before the artwork inside the majority of it is okay when it gets to the fights and it starts getting graphic then that's when the art then that's when the artwork becomes really good and 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 and, and it, it, it makes it more immersive shall I say more graphic and stuff so really cool um, the story is, is, is actually a really good story um, and as I was saying just fleshes out more of the Sun and Kratos um, you've got new characters new enemies in here so that's really cool potentially enemies we could see in the second God of War game the, 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 the sequel to this one so you know it could give you a bit of backstory with some of the um, enemies that we might potentially get in the second game and if not then the enemies are exclusive to these um, was it to this story to these comics and stuff um, yeah so what I would say is that if you can get them get them they're definitely worth getting if I had to give this short mini series a score I would probably give it a I would give it like a 8.5 out of 10 I think it's that good to me it's that good um, if the artwork was better and consistent all through, I mean all through all these books then I probably would give it like a 9 or 9.5 easy um, but other than that I think that these books are really well written really well done um, and yeah you know, like these are like my babies these are my gems so I strongly recommend as I've said before if you can go and get them go and get them go and get these so yeah God of War anyway so I'd like to thank you for watching this in-depth review uh, of God of War uh, comic review and yeah thank you for watching this uh, my name is Jay aka Mr Ghost Protocol uh, please leave some comments down below uh, please let me know if you've got these comics what do you think because we all have different opinions art is very subjective you might think something completely different to me so let me know if you have these comics let me know what you think about these comics and if you don't have these comics then go and get them um, if you like this video and it becomes a thing then I'm going to try to do more reviews uh, with the comic book reviews and stuff and yeah that's about it really so please uh, like subscribe uh, you can find us on instagram twitter soundcloud um yeah so that's all casual games thank you for watching